Hey, I'm Mikael Haveri from Housemark, and uh, yeah, we're over here at Reboot announcing cool stuff. What are your thoughts about how you've seen this Croatian game development conference evolve over the last three years? It's been uh, insane. I mean, this is one of the most friendliest places, you know, for us developers to meet other developers and just hang out. And then uh, it's, it's, it's a good mixture of taking it easy and still being able to do a lot of business stuff. So. I'm a, I'm a big fan. This is my conference for sure. And there's also a lot of Finnish developers here. How did that happen? So so a while back, I think this was uh, three years ago in Split or so, uh, uh, one of my friends from Finland who actually owns a boat called me that he just bought it and uh, he wants to hang. Uh, it was nearby and then that ended up being a side party with the, with the boat. And, uh, and now it's like sort of a, a event and it's, uh, the boat's getting bigger every year, so I don't know what's going to happen next year. <laughs> and so is the conference. They got over 1,500 people here this year. Enough, I guess, for you guys to announce a brand new game. Absolutely. So today we uh, kind of teased a new game called Storm Divers, which is uh, after our, our sort of a pivot into different genres, we're doing something a bit bigger now. Still arcade at heart, but not necessarily arcade. Uh, uh, as it, at its core, but uh, multiplayer centric, uh, big explosions, fast action, more more on that coming soon, but just the name and a little teaser coming out today. What do you feel it is that has defined uh, the games that you guys have made over the years? I, I really think that we try to perfect that way that you enter a game that's easy to get into, but then we, we bring you a lot of uh, opportunity to, to kind of master your skill. Uh, and not a lot of people expect that. They, they like to get a hand-holding experience where you take them from one place to another. For us, we want you to experience that and you know, have that highs and lows. So, so tight controls are probably the primary focus of what we, like now we've been prototyping for two years and it's just been to get the control experience out really well. And then once we get that, we start adding a lot of visual effects and, and explosions and, and glare. Not only stuff that looks pretty in a, in a static thing, but we try to create beauty out of chaos. So it's, it's more of as much particles as we can pack into it. How are you guys set up when it comes to developing one game and then prototyping another? Like, how is your studio structured? So we've been a, a Toon Team a company for quite a while now. Uh, long history with Sony, so last year we came up with Matterfall and Next Machina. Uh, and uh, they've been smaller teams in size usually, but then you always have to have something coming up. So that's been like, it sometimes may feel even as a, as a three team uh, company, as you need to have somebody, small team, uh, working on the new prototype. Uh, sometimes we've been able to uh, just do concepts and uh, pitches and PowerPoint and sell games like that. But the reality of that's uh, a bit off, so you have to put some effort in. So yeah, technically we're a three-team uh, company. So you guys still operate in many ways like an indie, right? Absolutely. I mean, we're privately owned. Uh, we have been able to have some great partnerships throughout the years, uh, mainly Sony, but also with Activision and Ubisoft. And, uh, you know, we still try to keep it independent. Uh, who knows what's in the future, but right now we're, we're glad to be still existing the oldest Finnish uh, game development studio and, uh, and kind of gradually grow into where we're comfortable uh, and still can know that we can do that for another 20 years. What do you feel the Finnish culture brings to the table when, when you look at the games like you guys put out? I think Finland and, you know, we've been, today we mentioned that we look up to a lot of the American arcade classics and, you know, we got the chance to work with Eugene Jarvis who made Defender and Robotron and, and there's a lot of American uh, classic arcade games that we want to instill in a way in our products. Uh, also, there's a huge uh, influence from Japanese, you know, the really classic games where it's, it's just hardcore gameplay. Um, and I think that we're somewhere in the middle. Uh, we're not quite American, we're not quite Japanese, uh, but we take a lot of both of those cultures and try to put them in and add a little bit of that crazy Finnish flair as well. So it's, it's a mix and match, but uh, it's, it's hard to say what's Finnish about it. Uh, our culture is a bit weird anyway, so hopefully we're a part of at least defining what that could be. You guys started before the, the current retro uh, craze that's going on around the world, but how has that impacted the arcade style gameplay that you guys normally bring to the table? 
You know, it's funny because we do feel that maybe we're um, um, sort of at some point ahead of the curve and at some point we're like, oh, we're way behind. These kids are pulling off crazy stunts here. And of course, you know, we've been a, a, such a long-term company that the, the scope of the games and the size of the game, so I think those have been um, recently more of hindrances in a way that we can create these games. We're not as agile. We're getting older, you know, we don't have that skill to move as much anymore. But I mean, we're very proud of all the cool stuff that's happening out there. We're always rooting for arcade and arcade will be our heart, but sometimes we need to try off some little different twists off too. Now I know uh, you guys talked about Unreal being the engine behind this new project. What does that bring to the table when you guys are developing and prototyping being able to kind of ideate as you guys are going on? Ease of access again, it's something to you know really get into and get stuff done. You know, if you're an artist, you can do a lot of things. You don't always need to call up the coder guy and then try to get things worked out before you can even try things out. Um, again, uh, we do have a long past with our own engines, so we still wanted to sort of find a way where we can add to it. So we are now today announcing our Housemark VFX engine, which is just something that we're using to sort of define that additional a uh, level of, of, of this VFX glamour that we're adding on top of it. So it's, it's, it's been a while getting into it, but I think now we're starting to master uh, the ins and outs of it, so yeah. What's it been like to see the, uh, the console space over the last year uh, upgrade to both 4K and HDR? So we've been um, really uh, glad to work with Sony on things like Resogun, and, and they actually are pushing a lot of this um, you know, upgrades. So I think that, you know, getting getting the HDR, 4K uh, patches and these things that you can actually upgrade your current titles, I think that's been wonderful. Uh, I think it's something that is sort of laying a foundation uh, for where to go and it's it's just hard to transition and not all, not all these things will always stick. Like 3D, for example, in the end it was nice, but it didn't stick. So let's see, uh, I'm sure 4K and HDR will be a big part of a lot of future titles for sure.